video is about the electrolysis of molten salts using molten lead bromide as an example, which is also the one that is mentioned explicitly in your syllabus. Here's my basic setup for electrolysis. In this case, it's the electrolysis of lead to bromide, which means it's PB, the symbol for lead, 2 means it's 2 plus in the ionic compound, and we know that bromine, because it's in group 7, forms a 1 minus charge. So overall, that means the compound is PBBr2. I also know that it's a liquid because in the question it says it's the electrolysis of molten lead bromide. So we can add the L state symbol next to the compound. What we can do next is we can decide which is the anode and the cathode. Don't forget that the smaller side of the battery means it's the negative side, so it's linked to the negative electrode, which is the cathode in this case. What you've got is you've got your lead bromide as your electrolyte, but I've already said that it's a liquid, which means that actually what it exists as is lead 2 plus ions and bromide 1 minus ions. So this is a better representation of what it looks like in that liquid. So, the kind of things that you might be asked is what's going on at the cathode and anode and what is produced there. Now, in the definition that we came across earlier, you might remember that electrolysis normally produces simpler substances, which is normally the element rather than the ion. So at the cathode, if we think about what's attracted to that negative electrode, it's the positive ions. And in this case, the positive ions are the lead ions, the Pb2+. So the Pb2 plus is attracted to that negative cathode. When it gets there, it turns into its element. Now what we need to do is to work out how that happens, and we show this using a half equation. So let's check out how to write one of those. The first thing you need to do with your half equation is to, one, check that the elements in your equation balance. So making sure that you've got the same number of each element on each side, like you would with a normal balancing equation. The second thing you need to do is to check that the charges balance on both sides. If they don't balance, the way that we fix this is we add electrons to one side of the equation. Let's check out that example we were just looking at. For example, we can have a look at the elements on both sides, but what I can see is that I've got one lead on the left and one lead on the right, so it's already balanced, it's all good. The problem is that the charges don't currently balance because the lead on the left has got a charge of 2 plus and the lead on the right currently has no charge whatsoever. If the only thing I can add is electrons which are negatively charged, how can I balance this up? Well, the only way to fix it is to add two electrons to the left-hand side, because what happens then is that they cancel out and they give you a charge of zero, and zero balances with the right-hand side. So I'm going to add my electrons there. We call this reduction, which is a word you've come across before. Reduction means a gain in electrons. So the lead 2 plus gained two electrons to become lead, and we call that reduction out what happens at the anode. So the anode is my positive electrode. So the thing that gets attracted to my anode is the negative ions, which in this case are the bromide ions. So the bromide ions get attracted to the anode. Now they also become their elemental form at the anode. So Br- minus turns to Br. But what you need to remember is that all of those halogens, when they exist as elements, they exist as a diatomic element. So really, this is Br2. So to balance that, I need to add 2 in front of the Br-. So in my stages, I've already balanced the elements. So now I've got 2 Br- on the left and Br2 on the right. But what I need to do next is I need to balance the charges. So let's check that out. On the left-hand side, I've got two Br minus. So that means that the charge overall on that side is two minus. On the right-hand side, I've just got Br2. That has no charge attached to it. 
What we need to do is balance the charges by adding those negative electrons. So I need to make the charges equal on both sides. If I add them to the left again, that's just going to make that number more negative and further away from the right. So what I need to do is to add two electrons to the right hand side, because what that will do is cause the right hand side to also be two minus. So the key thing here is that both sides don't need to be neutral, they just have to equal each other up. We call this process oxidation because the bromide ion had electrons at the beginning and it lost them. So oxidation is the loss of electrons. It no longer has them at the end of the reaction. One last thing that I'd like to mention is that we can also call this a redox reaction. So redox just means that you've got oxidation and reduction occurring simultaneously, which is exactly what you've got here. So the Pb2 plus undergoes reduction, while at the same time the Br minus undergoes oxidation. All good. That's it for the electrolysis of molten lead to bromide. You can check your understanding with lots of other salts. Lots of things work in a very, very similar way. Just remember how to balance those half equations correctly.